Welcome. In this video, we'll show you how to make something like this. With FL Studio plugins and tools. Psytrance is a subgenre of trance that's defined mainly by lasery sounding kicks and fast, often 16th note bass lines. In the spirit of the series, I've already made the track and saved all the sounds I made for it as presets and added the samples I used in the actual track to the wishlist in FL Cloud, so you don't have to watch me finding samples. To find them on your own, just type Psy into the Sounds tab search bar. Or you can check out the Psytrance Essentials collection, which contains all the samples used in the project. Before we get started, let's set the tempo to 145 BPM by right-clicking the tempo selector and selecting type in value. Drums. Let's start with the kick sound. I chose this one because it's sort of a hybrid between a punchy dance music kick and a very pronounced lasery decaying sine wave. Let's grab it from FL Cloud and make it into an instrument track. This automatically links it to a mixer track and playlist track and so gives you a good overview of where your audio is going. This is the channel rack, also known as the step sequencer. I'll right click the kicks channel button and select fill each four steps to get a four to the floor pattern. Great. This is the playlist. We'll be spending most of this tutorial here. You'll notice the pattern is already placed there, but when I hit the space bar to play, nothing happens in it. All the action is in the channel rack. Switch FL Studio to song mode here, or press L on your computer keyboard to hear what is happening in your playlist. If L plays the kick instead, you have typing keyboard to piano roll selected in the toolbar. Turn that off to use shortcuts. Paint the pattern a couple of times. Powers of two are a good starting point. Psytrance gets a lot of its feel from fills. Variations in a repeating pattern. So we will click the top left edge of the last clip and select Make Unique. This has made a new pattern with the same content. Let's add a roll to the kick. Double click the pattern to open its piano roll. This is the piano roll. You can paint notes in here. It works like the step sequencer. I will now change these last notes around. Click and drag to extend a note. Control click and drag in the piano roll to make a selection box. Then press Alt or Option and U to open up the chop tool. This allows you to chop the selected notes in rhythmic divisions. I will turn the time up until we get something interesting. Hey, that almost sounds like a note. I'll now add some other percussion designed for the Psytrance genre before we move on from drums. Hi-hats and a snare to be specific. Click a step to activate it. Right click to remove it. Cool. This, for the most part, is the extent of Psytrance drums. Bass. Where the fun happens is the bass. I'll drag in the preset I chose for this first. Right click the channel button and open its piano roll. Most Psytrance bass revolves around a single note, 16th notes to be exact. There are varying philosophies, but in most Psytrance tracks, the kick will drown out the first 16th note hit completely. Some producers will delete the first 16th note of every four because of that. We're not going to do that here. Let's edit the velocities so they rise up toward the end of every beat. Nice. Now how do you keep this kind of sound interesting? One thing I like to do is pretty specific to Harmer and its additive effects. You can set the phaser to harmonic mode, set its speed to still, turn the mix up, 
and then tweak the phaser width for a progressively decaying comb filter-like effect. This is great to mark the end of a phrase, for example. Let's automate this. Right-click the phaser width knob and select Create Automation Clip. Yeah, that fits. Another thing you can do is a little bit more complex, so excuse me if I gloss over it a little. Basically, you'll want to make a patcher that can be mixed in to progressively exclude all even harmonics from the sound. Since we're mostly on one note with a bass, this is not going to require serious key tracking, but the end result will have that set up too. The plugins we'll use here are Stereo Shaper, Fruity Send, and Multiband Delay. Multiband Delay is set to snap its delay to notes here, and I've selected the bass's root note G as the resonator frequency. This G is an octave higher than the one played in the bass, though. After that, the signal is inverted with Stereo Shaper, and an inverted dry signal is combined with it to leave only the signal that Multiband Delay added to the sound. So essentially, I can use the fruity send here to mix that into the unaffected audio, and that is going to remove all even harmonics from the sound due to the way the delays are set up and inverted in multiband delay. Now we've turned it into a square wave-like sound. We can automate the dry control on Fruity Send to turn that on whenever we want. Automation in Patcher works the same way as normal, only controls have to be activated first. I'll add some more automations that you can dissect later on in the full demo project. Synths and vocals. Lots of Psytrance tracks emphasize certain parts of the rhythm with short, lasery synths as well. Here's an example on FL Cloud. We're going to make that, but not that, using 3 -osk. What you'll want is three saw waves, a pitch envelope that looks something like this, and a destructor plugin with a crusher module loaded to add some aliasing. Then add reverb and delay. Cool. That can spice up the soundscape every now and again. Let's drag in some vocal sounds. Psytrance often operates in a Phrygian dominant tonal center outside of the drop. You'll recognize that sound immediately. Here's the first vocal I chose. I chopped it up a little though. And here it is with effects. And the second one has that Phrygian dominant sound baked in already, which is great. Let's double that up with a flute from Flex. Arrangement. We have an intro coming together already. I'll rearrange the project now to separate the parts. Control click and drag in the playlist to make a selection box. You can then click and drag all selected items to a different position and time. We'll do 32 bars of intro and 32 bars of drop. In the intro, let's add a slowly moving subdued respace that follows the flute pattern. and a 303 style sound from transistor bass. Oh 
Also, let's add some shakers from FL Cloud. I'll just drag them in to make an audio track. In the second half, let's use a drum loop, also from FL Cloud, because I, like many of you, am too lazy to dig through my own database of stuff, as even with terabytes of samples saved on my PC, often enough stuff that I've already used will come up in a search, because I search for the same stuff. Because FL Cloud keeps adding new stuff, whether I search for a drum break now, or a week after today, might be a totally different story. Let's embellish the drop with a bass loop from FL Cloud. Again, this 303 style screaming synth one fits perfectly. I'll drag it onto a playlist track header and choose audio track. Let's add some additional percussion layers to the second part of the drop to intensify it. Now it's time to design some transitional elements. A 909 snare roll is a great place to start. Drag in the sample, make an instrument track, fill every step. Then press K on your computer keyboard to see the graph editor, where you can edit velocity and pitch right from the step sequencer. Now it's just a matter of adding some more purpose-built sound effects and careful automation and time-lapse. And we are at the point we teased at the start of the video. We hope this video gave you an insight into the Psytrance genre and how it works. There are many variants of it, but the approach shown in this video should get you close to where you want to take it in the end anyways. Don't forget to check out the video description for more helpful resources and a link to the demo project we made for this video. Happy music making!